The way to get started is to quit talking and begin doing. That, my friends, was a quote by Walt Disney. The greatest glory in living lies not in never falling, but in rising every time we fall. That is by Nelson Mandela. Your time is limited, so don't waste it living someone else's life. Don't be trapped by dogma, which is living with the results of other people's thinking. That's by Steve Jobs. Whoever is happy will make others happy too. And Frank. It is during our darkest moments that we must focus to see the light. That was by Aristotle. I like this one. Do not go where the path may lead. Go instead where there is no path and leave a trail. And that is by Ralph Waldo Emerson. It's one of my favorite quotes. Spread love everywhere you go. Let no one ever come to you without leaving happier. That's cool. And that is Mother Teresa. When you reach the end of your rope, tie a knot in it. And hang on. And that is by Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Don't judge each day by the harvest you reap, but by the seeds that you plant. I like that. Robert Louis Stevenson. Tell me and I forget. Teach me and I remember. Involve me and I learn. And that is by Benjamin Franklin. Here's something I always thought about that always has stuck with me. The best and most beautiful things in the world cannot be seen or even touched. They must be felt with the heart. I've always liked that one. That was by Helen Keller. Um... Never let the fear of striking out keep you from playing the game. Babe Ruth. Life is either a daring adventure or nothing at all. Again, by Helen Keller. Many of life's failures are people who did not realize how close they were to success when they gave up. Thomas Edison. Think about that one. If we just quit. You guys all remember that guy who came in second, right? Yeah, well, either does anybody else. (laughs) And that doesn't matter if you're doing your best anyway. You have brains in your head. You have feet in your shoes. You can steer yourself any direction you choose. It's by Dr. Seuss. In the end, it's not the years in your life that count. It's the life in your years. And that is by the one and only Mr. Abraham Lincoln, ladies and gentlemen. Life is a succession of lessons which must be lived to be understood. Again, Ralph Waldo Emerson. May you live all the days of your life. That is by Jonathan Swift. Life itself is the most wonderful fairy tale. That is Hans Christian Andersen. Do not let making a living prevent you from making a life. John Wooden. Life is ours to be spent, not to be saved. D.H. Lawrence. I like uh, going over some quotes every once in a while to myself. In fact, there was a a book that I had, one of my favorite books. Man, it was thick, and it cost me a bundle. And I ended up sending that to uh, someone I talked about. It was kind of a mentor to me, uh, Richard Marcinko. He was the author of the book, uh, The Road 
Road Warrior series, excuse me. Uh, Dick Marcinko, commander of SEAL Team 6. The Rogue Warrior himself has passed away a while back. But uh, I've learned a lot from his little mentorship that he gave me. And he gave many other people as well. But uh, I like that he took the time to reach out to me and, you know, kind of become a like a friend and a mentor simultaneously. I really respected the guy. And he was someone that if he told you to do something or he suggested you do something, that you do it. And no matter, you know, how maybe dark and grim it might seem, like maybe your success rate looks really low, you do it. You go for it. I remember asking him in a conversation uh, when we were hanging out down in Virginia, and I pulled him aside from a group of people that we were talking. So I said, Dick, I said, are you, you ever scared? You know, and, and he just kind of like looked at me. And I said, let me ask you a question. Let me rephrase this. You're in a submarine. You get locked out, right? Lockout is when they go into a little vessel or they, they, Exfil the submarine when it's, I don't know, 30, 40, 50, 60 feet below the surface of the ocean. And then they swim out from this little vessel that is attached to the uh, the sub. And then maybe they swim in the shore from there. You ever get scared of that? <laughs> he looks at me, he goes, I said, how about like sharks or anything? You ever see anything out there in the, in the night? He says, uh, well, I'll tell you, there was this one time. Something really big bumped into me. <laughs> and I just looked at him. I was like, wow. And it was that was his way of just saying, look, you know, you would be foolish not to be, I think, fearful in things in life. Um, and it was basically he left. It was interesting because he kind of left it to me to figure that out. Would you be scared of something very big <laughs> in the middle of the ocean bumped up against you in the middle of the night? You know, it's just, uh, it was, it was an interesting conversation. He's a great guy. Um, it was a pleasure to know him. And, and I just think about, he's a guy through his controversy. He still lived life. He still grasped each and every day. He worked hard for what he had. He did the best at what he had. Things that you and I will never know of the stories, uh, that those people do to keep us safe. And I'm reading these quotes and I just think about a lot of different people that would kind of like have inspired me, not only in some of these folks with their sayings, uh, but just uh, people who have inspired me just by the life that they live, which is funny. I just glanced at this one. Love the life you live. Live the life you love. Mr. Bob Marley. Life is made of ever so many partings welded together. That's Charles Dickens. Life is trying things to see if they work. Ray Bradbury. It's kind of neat. I find that the harder I work, the more luck I seem to have. That's Thomas Jefferson. And something I just put up the other day on the Facebook page, because I like to put up quotes every once in a while, and this one is uh, one to make you think. Success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. And if you haven't seen the little theme I got going on here today, talking about courage, because everything that I'm reading to you, all the underlying tone is courage. The way to get started is to quit talking and begin doing that kind of takes courage. And that's by Walt Disney. Don't be distracted by criticism. Remember, the only taste of success some people get is to take a big bite out of you. <laughs> that's Zig Ziglar. Success usually comes to those who are too busy to be looking for it. Henry David Thoreau. And that kind of equates to doing what you love. People say, if you're doing something that you love, you'll never work a day in your life. Because you love doing it. I never dreamed about success. I worked for it. 
says Estee Lauder. Success may seem to be connected with action. Successful people keep moving. They make mistakes, but they don't quit. And that was by Conrad Hilton of the famous or infamous or famous Hilton Hotels. I mean, you're making mistakes. You got to keep going. That takes courage and persistence. There are no secrets to success. It is the result of preparation hard work, and learning from failure. Colin Powell. I wish he would have ran for president. I'd have voted for him. But that takes courage. The real test is not whether you avoid this failure, because you won't. It's whether you let it harden or shame you into inaction, or whether you learn from it, whether you choose to persevere. Again, Courage, and that was by Barack Obama. It is better to fail in originality than to succeed in imitation. Basically, be yourself. Don't just imitate somebody. Be you. Herman Melville, and he is the author of Moby Dick. This goes on, and here you go, here we go. I failed my way to success, Thomas Edison. But anyway, back to Dick Marcinko. I was talking about that book. Um, this is my book of quotes, motivational quotes, and just all types of inspirational quotes like this. And I mailed that off to Dick uh, to his, one of his companies that he owned. I knew he was there at the office, and you know, got a big thank you from him. But I liked opening that up every day and reading that. And I knew that he would appreciate the book because that's kind of his mindset as well, to motivate yourself, to lead from the front. I wake up this morning with this desire to speak to you. And when I talk to you, right, trust me when I tell you I'm not talking at you. I could end each and every sentence I say to you with the word Tony, basically, I failed my way to success, Tony, from Thomas Edison. If you set your goals ridiculously high and it's a failure, you will fail above everyone else's success, Tony. Don't be afraid to give up the good to go for the great, Tony. It's by John Rockefeller. I'm kind of talking to myself when I'm talking to you. I do it purposely because this is my way of reminding myself what I need to keep on doing, to keep on going. You got to go back to when that, that one saying, gosh, I don't even remember if I could find it, what it was, but uh, just about what I said in regards to uh, it is better to fail in originality than to succeed in imitation and then to doing what you love to do. And when you do it, you'll find that you never worked a day in your life. I don't think I've ever found something that I love to do more than this. It's not a job. It's just something I do. What do you do that makes you feel really good? What is there in your life that you love to do? And what are the, the end means? What's the end game for what it is that you love to do? For me, again, we talked about that the other day, maybe uh, I think it was yesterday's podcast when I threw something up. These are just going to be like little bonus episodes. I'm not going to keep on naming, number them, numbering them, excuse me. Um, it's just my motivational, little motivational mantras, right? And maybe I need this right now. What's the end game? What's my end game? I guess, I guess it's the same as everybody's end game, to feel good about yourself. To give yourself satisfaction. That good feeling of giving. And I don't know where you're at with that. But here I am in my life, been around for a while, a long time. And I can still say there is no better feeling in my life than a life of service. Uh, to God, to others, to giving back. 
It's rewarding, man. I like giving and no one knowing. I came across a Facebook post the other day. It said, uh, what's the what's the coolest thing you ever did for somebody else? Or the most momentous thing? I can think of things. I can think of things. Isn't that a song? <laughs> I forget who sings that. I can think of things. <laughs> oh, goofy. Um, but the deal is, I got this little thing that I do, and it is about uh, not ne- not letting the left hand know what the right hand's doing. Right? It's the you know, it's a. I, I want to say Matthew six. I don't even know if that's correct. But it's about giving. It's about doing good things for other folks and not really looking for any recognition from it. The feeling and the specialty of doing something like that, to me, there's nothing like it. I like to do that. I like to do that. But what is it that you do? This is today just to kind of instill some thoughts in your mind, some questions. Because if you're not challenged every day, then you're going to get stagnant. It's like sitting on the bench in a baseball game, not playing. You want to participate each and every day in this game called life. Just sitting there, vegging out, not challenging yourself, is not healthy. Keep the brain going. Keep thinking. Maybe people will say, I overthink. I do. I'll tell you that. In everything I question. In everything I do, I search for purpose and meaning. Yeah, that can be exhausting. Because it's all driven by my fear of in the end living a slothful and meaningless life. So today is all about challenging you to think. To challenge yourself. Because our goal, this whole goal of this podcast to find these subjects, to make us think, to motivate us, to live better lives, to live the best life that we can live, to be the best person that we can be in this gift of time that we are given each and every day. The vultures are back. (laughs) Yeah. I'm just fascinated by the gift of flight. I was thinking also, you know, yeah, you know, people could say, that it's just a dumb bird. Hey, bird brain. You know how small a bird's brain is? But then I'm also thinking about the abilities that you would need to navigate flight. Not hit that tree. Watch out for that tree, George, George. Just, uh, you know, to fly with the wind, against the wind, how to land. That takes some thought and intelligence. It's not just something that you can have and then wake up tomorrow and have to relearn that, like 50 first dates. So I think we take that for granted when we just see something. Yeah, it's just a bird. It's a bird's got a lot going on. Bird's designed for a plan of action to uh, to be around, to survive. Do birds have courage? Because we're talking about courage today. We're talking about challenging ourselves. Does a bird have courage? Is it like something genetically inherent and in, within them that... Uh, I'm going to go for that no matter what. Or is there fear? Or is that fear just some cautionary trait that they're born with to protect themselves? Like, hey, I'm not going to get in a fight with that red-tailed hawk, even though my wingspan's a whole lot bigger and I could probably take it down. Who knows? What have you ever done that took a lot of courage? And these are questions you ask yourself and answer yourself. You could say, well, I remember a lot of times where um, maybe I showed the lack of courage. And that's where I'll say to you, who hasn't? And then I'll also say to you and segue to this, the most perfect family or person you, you, you know of is the one you don't know anything about. That person that everybody always looked up to when you're growing up. Oh, man, he was so cool. That person's cool. Or, you know, she's the best. No problems. Perfect looking, perfect in everything, everything they do. Wrong. 
They're just really good at not letting you know what was truly going on. Or maybe you just didn't know. Everybody's got something going on. So back to you. None of us are perfect. All of us show courage in many different ways. It could be in the face of adversity. It could be in a chance you took something, maybe getting a job. It could even be standing in a batter's box against someone who throws some serious heat, an 80, 90, 100 mile an hour fastball, and sometimes they're reckless. <laughs> and you're like, man, I don't want to be, I hope this guy don't slip. You know, I, you could beat me in the head. It takes courage. There's courage in so many different forms. There's courage for a lot of people just to wake up each and every morning and face themselves. And learn to like themselves. So what is your badge of courage from? What's your challenge that you're trying to overcome? And what is that task that you do each and every day that maybe calls for a lot of courage? For a lot of people, it could be just going to school. And facing bullies. And bullies just don't exist in school, folks. It could be in a workplace. It can be in just an everyday life. I don't have all the answers to this stuff. We're just, uh, I'm spitballing. I'm doodling, too. I'm just drawing. Did you ever do that? I used to draw jet airplanes all the time. Jets and tanks. And I remember getting yelled at by the nuns. What are you doing, you moron? Why are you drawing that? It's war. And then the talk with my parents when your teacher's night, parent-teacher night. Yeah, your son draws a lot of war stuff. <laughs> yeah, well, he wants to be in the Rat Patrol. What can I tell you? <laughs> I love the Rat Patrol. They just Rat Patrolled in the desert and didn't really achieve much. Every once in a while, they come across some Germans. And the guy in the back wore a uh, rebel hat. And he had to you know, man the machine guns. And they're going over these jumps. And <laughs> there's zero suspension in those Jeeps. They look like they were having fun. Get to wear those goggles. All right? Cool tan uniforms. <laughs> Rap Patrol. Takes courage getting married. I don't regret my marriage. The best thing I've ever done. It takes courage to survive, to surrender who you are and join in a union with somebody. You're surrendering your individuality in a way and becoming one with another person and sharing love and sharing life plans and moving forward that way with your best friend. It takes courage and you have to believe that things are going to work out and things are going to be positive. A lot of people go into marriages and they think, yeah, well, this don't work. I can end this pretty quick. But uh, to go into a relationship and to, you know, through sickness and in health and good times and bad, it takes courage. Courage. Who needed the courage? On the Wizard of Oz. It's a cowardly lion, right? <laughs> Here's a lion. Everybody's automatically afraid of the lion. And he's growling and stuff and scaring the crap out of Toto. Ain't even Dorothy a little bit there. And here he's just a fraidy cat. Get it? <laughs> but in the end, he found his carriage. And the Tin Man found his heart. And the scarecrow found his brain, and Dorothy found her way home. And the wicked witch got squashed. All's good in life. <laughs> I failed my way to success, says Thomas Edison. Try not to become a man of success. Rather be a man of value, says Albert Einstein. Hmm. 
always bear in mind that your own resolution to success is more important than any other one thing. Success is walking from failure to failure with no loss of enthusiasm. Winston Churchill, think about the courage that you need to walk from failure to failure with no loss of enthusiasm, to remain positive. Failure is something everybody achieves, something everybody experiences. We fail at a lot of different things. Can I tell you how many failed businesses I've had? Um, only one <laughs> that I think of because I kind of let it go. Right? I was the candle. I was a candle guy. I was going to go up against uh, Yankee Candle and take them down. <laughs> we sold a crap ton of baskets, like gift baskets with these candles. And I devised these candles. I'm like, yeah, you know what? I'm going to use this special wax that burns a lot longer and they burnt forever. We're great. But I didn't have that distribution. <laughs> and if I wanted the distribution, maybe I'd have found it. Landscape and business was pretty successful. A young kid cutting lawns. I liked cutting lawns too, so it was like, uh, you know, it was good. Everybody fails at something. Kind of rambling today. It's okay. Gave you something to think about, I hope. Talk to you tomorrow. Just a quick hello. Have a great day. Think about it. What is it, in, what is it that you wish to accomplish in life? And what is success? Other than subjective. Success can mean a lot of things to different people. I feel as if I'm a success. I'm doing what I love to do. I don't make money from it, but I wake up every day, every morning thinking about it, thinking about talking to you, wherever you might be, thinking that I can instill some sense of kindness and empathy and understanding in you in the hope that you will pass that along to your fellow human being. That's my end game. Is it possible to show kindness and sincerity and consideration and empathy for somebody and hope that they take that on and pass that on? That's what I'm looking to do by sitting here talking to you, by opening your mind as I open my mind, as we talk about things and dare to ask these questions of ourselves and challenge ourselves each and every day. And to dig deep into our faith, whatever that might be, <clears throat> and depend on that and count on it and to inspire us. And then to find the courage of change, the courage to continue to keep on keeping on. That's what you get in a box of finding subjects. Have a great day. Challenge yourself. Have the courage to walk forward. Don't quit. Back to uh, this guy. The greatest glory in living lies not in never falling, but in rising every time we fall. The greatest glory in living lies not in never failing, but in rising every single time we fall down. And that is by Nelson Mandela. The greatest glory in living lies not in never failing, but you get that greatest glory in rising every time you fall down. That's the courage that we're talking about. The courage to stand back up and keep on going. Insert whatever. Insert whatever is applying to your life and that works. You got this. Have a great day. Talk to you tomorrow. Peace.